this game right here? We worked on it for 10 years and ended up cancelling it. In this video, you will find out how we made a bullet hell game in an engine that really cannot do bullet hell. Why we ended up cancelling it and most importantly what we have learned from it, which is a lot. Usually on this channel we show you how to create cool stuff and how nicely our game progresses. But there is an essential part of the game development process missing in these videos. The failing. Just to set the scene, here is a quick timeline. I started working on the game with a friend from school in 9th grade. I had no coding experience, but I was a nerdy kid and I had a lot of faith in myself. He dropped out of the project, which was a bummer. I started to share my life with Dorothea, which was pretty great. She joined the project. I started my computer science degree, Dorothea started a computer science degree. I finished my computer science degree, Dorothea finished her computer science degree. The game was a post-apocalyptic bullet hell RPG with an overcomplicated fantasy-like spell system where you played the death himself, made in RPG Maker 2003. It had a lot of dialogue. Inspirations were Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels, the original Dota and a bit of Fallout 2, I guess. Definitely a strange mix. If this sounds like we try to be everything at once, it's because we try to be everything at once. We started with a simple enough RPG style approach, but soon we came to the conclusion that we could add advanced features to our game. Just to name a few examples, the engine had a combat system and a dialogue system, but we made our own. The engine did not support proper lighting, but we just drew light maps ourselves and patched the engine to support additive blending. We implemented a particle system from scratch in C++ because we wanted one. The question we asked ourselves in these discussions was, can we do it? But there are many other questions you should ask yourself. Every feature you implement has a cost. There is the obvious one, implementation time. But it usually is only a fraction compared to the maintenance cost that is often overlooked. Every bit of new content must support the features you implemented earlier. You decided to paint light maps yourself? Sure, do this for each of the hundreds of rooms you have planned. Also, each feature increases the size of your code base. Sounds harmless, but even if you do your best, debugging gets harder with every single system involved. We found that it is always wise to put in the effort and do everything you can to minimize maintenance effort, even though it slows down initial results. Also, you should think about how much better the feature actually makes your game. So takeaway number one, think about maintenance effort and architectural complexity as a finite resource. Ask yourself if a new feature is worth the cost and if it is not, simply don't do it. We worked against the engine, not with it, and tried to implement everything we felt able to do. Do not do this. Related to this, address tedious tasks as soon as possible. At some point, there will be tasks you could automate or improve the workflow, but you feel like they are not that bad and you are used to doing them anyway. However, they can quickly become overwhelming and kill overall productivity. The next thing that held us back, we called band-aids later on. At some point in development, game design problems became obvious, for example in our combat system. Our combat system was based on 27 unique spells being accessible all at the same time. The way you would cast them was by inputting a combination of three buttons, every combination mapping to a different spell. The order mattered. Understandably, this system was very hard to manage for newer players and we wanted to address it. So what did we do? We implemented a new interface element that showed how you could finish the spell on top of the screen. We like to think it helped a little bit, but did it solve the underlying problem of the combat system being orders of magnitude too complicated? No, of course not. It took many hours to make. It increased maintenance effort and the problem was still there. It was like seeing the foundation of your house crumble and just putting band-aids on it. So. There's takeaway number two for you. Always try to solve the root of the problem. A problem is not automatically fixed just because you implemented something that addressed it. It is best to take a step back and try to solve it on a fundamental level. But the most important reason why we worked on this game for 10 years and never finished it was because we just did not bother to define a clear goal. We stumbled into each new feature because we had fun making them and learn something on the way. And this was great. But we could have had fun and learned something, 
while also finishing at least one or two games. It is hard to know when a game is done, and you will never be done. The to-do list will not be empty eventually. You should not expect that it will. To-do lists for games tend to get larger, not smaller. So the third takeaway for this video. Define a scope of features at the start that you think is far, far, far too simple to achieve. Plan a game that you think is just too easy to make. It will not be too simple. And even if it is, you can be happy you finished something and start a harder project. When you plan a project that you can just barely manage and it turns out harder than expected, which it will, it will just overwhelm you. Another thing that played into that is that we simply were afraid of releasing a game. We felt like we had to refine our skills before we are ready for the world to play what we made. This feeling will not go away by practicing game design. It will go away by getting over your fear and showing people your game. If you feel like your games are not good enough to be played, you are wrong. You can do a Pong clone. And Pong is fun. You, listening to this video, you can make a fun game. And we are doing it right now. We are working on First of Us Fungeon for a year now. And we have a devlog to show your guys our progress. Our goals are clear and a demo is on the way. And somehow you guys kind of seem to think we are okay at game dev, which is great. If you want to support us, you can like and subscribe. Have a nice day.